Many years ago, on the west coast, this old trail led surveyors and prospectors, traders and drifters across to central Otago. They were chasing their luck backwards and forwards across the Alps, obsessed with thoughts of the fortune just around the corner and the wealth that success would bring. This was the only route they could follow. They trudged along it, rode over it, froze upon it and died beside it. Even now, after a hundred years, the trail still winds through thousands of square miles of untouched virgin bush, Rimu, Rata, Mairi and Matai, all growing just as they did for centuries before man first reached these heights. This party are following the trail down to Cromwell, 140 miles away in central Otago, to help the town celebrate its 100th birthday. Southwest of Lake Hawia lie the Dunstan Mountains. Beyond are the parched and sunburnt peaks of the Paisa and Carrick Ranges. Gold was found here in the 1860s, and for half a century the sound of winches and stampers echoed through stony outcrops where now only the wind stirs the tussock and barnica. Bendigo and Logantown, Nevis and Quartzville, Tarras and Carrick Town. Once they were boisterous settlements, now they are mere names. For every miner who found an El Dorado, many more found oblivion. They burned themselves out, as with picks, shovels, muscles and sweat, they chased the elusive metal 600 feet down into the dark earth. Along the Kawarau and the Klutha and the tributaries that fed them, prospectors from England and America, Australia and China washed the mud from the gold-bearing black sand. Differences of opinion were sometimes settled by appeal to higher authority, if you were lucky enough to have it within a hundred miles or so. In Cromwell today, the whole district recalls its vigorous and picturesque past during the centennial celebrations. For a fortnight, the townsfolk go about their ordinary business, but in 19th century costume. Only 20 years ago, Cromwell banks were still receiving gold dust, as well as more prosaic but less romantic forms of legal tender. Past and present become fused, it may be difficult to distinguish between them. A typical Sunday in 1866, a pleasantly quiet morning for meeting friends and chatting about the latest news, of the capital being shifted to Wellington, and the Maori wars raging up in the North Island, and isn't it about time that Governor Gray did something for Otago? Recreation at the Cromwell Academy for the instruction and education of the sons and daughters of gentlefolk.
procession day and everyone makes post haste to Cromwell. An old coal burning loco makes a fast run up the gorge from Clyde. The line has to follow the Cluther most of the way and the steady uphill gradient gives the old girl plenty of work. Cromwell lies at the junction of the Cluther and the Kawarau. When the horsemen arrive, they've travelled exactly halfway across the South Island at its widest. And so into their place in Cromwell's centennial procession. Spectators are in rather short supply, as practically the whole population of the town is in the parade. This isn't a grand affair, it wasn't intended to be. Instead, it sets out to illustrate some of the ordinary things of life from Cromwell's past. Procession, a town with a past as vigorous as its future pays homage to its history, a history which today briefly comes to life, but is then destined to fade with the century into wistful nostalgia.